Nikita, please join me in welcoming Nikita. Thank you. Um, uh, hello, uh, my name is Nikita Rakanov. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about um, automation of uh, discovery vulnerabilities, of taint analysis, of uh, BitBlaze. And uh, before I uh, kick off, I want to uh, s tell the story behind that work. Uh, it was uh, 2010 year, and uh, Alex with me, uh, we're working uh, in a CSS uh, company, um, doing a lot of uh, reverse engineering, uh, source code audit, and because uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, code, uh, we thought that uh, it will be a great idea to automate the uh, pro process of uh, vulnerability discovery. Um, and at that moment, uh, in my opinion, um, one uh, framework uh, is, uh, was great, actually, at the moment. It's great, too. Uh, so um, uh, let's kick it about uh, the authors. Uh, so, uh, so Alex is a security researcher from Ukraine. He's an uh, organizer of uh, DEFCON Ukraine group. Um, by now, uh, at the moment, he's sleeping, <laughs> I think, because he is in California. And uh, he works in the BitBase project. Uh, but uh, this talk is not uh, uh, some uh, secret uh, stuff about BitBase, because this work uh, was done um, almost a year ago when Alex uh, was working with me. Uh, and um, actually um, doing a IT security uh, business in Russia is kind of complicated. So uh, we uh, separated. Uh, he moved to US. <laughs> I stayed in Russia. Uh, so about me, after um, we separated, um, I think uh, he, Alex uh, gave nice uh, work in the BitBlaze, uh, but um, I uh, doing reverse engineering myself. Um, I'm right now I'm independent. Uh, actually, I'm author of some articles in the IT Security Russian magazine. It's uh, kind of of the one magazine in Russia about IT security, uh, and most of the time I like to reverse kernel land. Uh, and uh, in recent years, I discovered uh, some vulnerabilities um, in the kernel uh, in kernel land on the Windows platforms. And um, as me, Alex and me like to solve problem of automated reverse engineering. So this is actually talk about it. So the main, um, I will um, talk about, uh, first of all, about taint analysis theory itself, then about uh, BitBlaze, because uh, this uh, system uh, is based on BitBlaze uh, with some enhancements. And um, uh, next uh, will be loss time. You will, you're going to see <laughs> what is it. And uh, next I am going to talk about some uh, pitfalls about uh, some pitfalls about actually taint analysis and about uh, implementation of uh, this approach, like pitfalls in BitBlaze and uh, another pitfalls. And in conclusion, some results. So uh, actually, uh, such system has uh, two parts. Um, first one is a kind of uh, static part. Uh, it's um, based on IDA. Actually, it's IDA and uh, several uh, plugins. For example, uh, uh, X-Refing of some dangerous function like uh, memory copy, uh, malloc, but free memory, and uh, there are a lot of analogs. Uh, so actually, a p potential um, vulnerability it uh, can be uh, every instruction uh, that um, manipulates memory. For example, uh, virtual memory, is, uh, there is a move and there is an indirect call. So um, I will talk later about uh, internals uh, of uh, some plugins. And uh, kind of um, dynamic part, it's BitBlaze. 
and Bitblaze uh, just, you know, uh, when uh, in 2012, in 2008 and 2009 here, uh, firstly, Bitblaze project released Vine, and next uh, they released Temu. But actually, the thing is that um, it's not a framework that it's ready to use in the real world scenario, because um, it's kind of raw, and um, you have to enhance it uh, a lot uh, uh, to get at least some results. So I will uh, talk about theory. By the way, how you find uh, vulnerabilities? By fuzzing, I think, right? Raise your hands by fuzzing, by mutation. Uh, OK. Uh, for example, what uh, do you do if there is um, some uh, undocumented protocol and there is uh, some CRC or uh, some crypto stuff, and uh, actually by mutation fuzzing, you, you simply get nothing. So you have to manually reverse engineer some unknown format, and this is, uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, and to solve some kind of problems in recent years, uh, it, uh, taint analysis uh, was born. Uh, actually, taint analysis is kind of uh, data flow technique. So um, we get some first data, first input data, we taint it, and uh, then we monitor how instruction uh, processes data and safe and to lock. It's kind of, uh, it's implemented by tracing, so it's kind of log file. I will uh, show you how, how it looks like. So uh, basically, uh, source, it's uh, like in real world, uh, it could be anything, network packets, uh, keyboard press, uh, file from disk, or even you can uh, taint uh, output from some function, for example. You can taint uh, address of uh, malloc or something like that. So instructions process data somehow. And um, next. Uh, um, for example, if you have uh, just a uh, one kilobyte file and uh, there is a, for example, zip file, and firstly code uh, unzip this file, so uh, you marked, for example, file with uh, uh, just offsets, and then uh, program starts to uh, unzip and uh, some acting so um, taint, this taint information actually could be anything. Uh, in BitBlaze, there is a, for example, uh, offset plus uh, what kind of uh, data. For example, is it, does it uh, come from a network or file? Uh, you can implement it whatever. So it's kind of flat model. And um, this is kind of, you know, chain. Uh, for example, uh, move instruction uh, from memory to registry. Or, uh, so it's, if we're talking about tainting, uh, there is um, objects, uh, and it uh, object uh, has uh, some taint. Uh, it's uh, kind of whatever you want. <laughs> So, once uh, again, um, so, okay, about static tape analysis. Um, actually, at the first uh, part, using IDA Pro, you can reveal some uh, potential vulnerabilities, for example, by looking for XRFs, but because um, it's uh, just static without uh, real uh, values. Uh, it's um, uh, a lot uh, has a lot of uh, uh, false positives because uh, uh, you can't uh, say 
in 100% reliable that this is vulnerability. You have to uh, generate data uh, that after we, when the program, when analyzing program uh, processes data, uh, you will go to this potential vulnerable place and some crash triggers. So uh, it's uh, kind of uh, actually in real world static data analysis. It's uh, it, you use it with dynamic. So they are in both. When they separate, it's just uh, low effectively. And when I when you use it uh, in a, a combination, this is good because um, by static uh, you can remove uh, unuseful code. For example, if you look, there is a just like a, uh, no operation on memory, just some mathematics without uh, some interesting instruction like indirect calls, indirect jumps just uh, some calculation, you just skip it and uh, focus on interesting instructions like uh, virtual functions, uh, memory copy, calls, mallocs, and uh, there are a, a lot of potential vulnerable places. So uh, let's talk about framework, about BitBlaze actually. Uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, great framework, but in fact, um, open source version, it's uh, very buggy. It's uh, a lot of uh, uh, bugs, a lot of uh, dirty hacks, and um, it has a lot of uh, uh, it has a lot of future, but you have uh, manually coded because they're just they release just small part of what they have, actually. So um, this framework you can use it not just for discovery vulnerability, but for a lot of things. Uh, for example, uh, there was talk at Black Hat, and um, approach was. If you got crash from some kind of mutation fuzzing or uh, pro protocol based, uh, you just have crash, uh, and you have to analyze uh, what's there. Is, is it exploitable or not? Um, so uh, Charlie Miller at Black Hat uh, presented that using BitBlaze and uh, taint analysis and taint propagation techniques, you can reduce time of uh, analyzing in, for example, if you manually with debugger, uh, you actually it takes, for example, 12 hours, and with BitBlaze it takes minutes. So you, you just press the button and uh, some algo uh, says that this is memory corruption, from this, this offset from the file. So BitBlaze uh, consists of two main parts, uh, Vine, uh, which is kind of static component, and Timu, which is dynamic analysis component. And there are a lot of uh, private stuff. Um, they, they are closed. Uh, but there are a lot of papers, academic papers, you can read it. They are actually great. Uh, so the, the dynamic part, Timu, uh, coded nice. It's um, based on Kimu, uh, on fast emulator. And uh, there is, because Kimu is just emulator, it's uh, know nothing about process, about threads, about Files, it just process instructions. So uh, to know what to trace, where is the process, there is a semantic extractor. It, uh, in Windows, it's uh, implemented by driver that um, set notification routines 
For example, if some process starts, uh, it um, gets a message that uh, this PID, this uh, process started, and by uh, some registered interruption, it sends uh, some info to the host. So there is a uh, communication between emulation guest, where is uh, some targeting uh, software executing, and uh, host, where is a uh, Vine and, and uh, everything else. And uh, the second, uh, it's actually the main, it's a taint analysis engine. So it's implemented by hooking each instruction and uh, copy, for example, if it's move from registry to uh, memory and registry is tainted. So it um, implements propagation. So we just copy uh, tainted uh, info and uh, there is um, a lot of uh, actually uh, code in there because um, a lot of um, uh, strange code because uh, uh, x86 architecture uh, has uh, a lot and a lot of instructions and um, if you take a look at Timu it's uh, just you can see that there is a, a lot uh, and a lot of uh, functions uh, with, with names like instructions and there is a uh, got uh, operands and uh, just uh, do some uh, actions with uh, taint info and um, on top of that, there is an API. Uh, by using this API, you can uh, code, you can develop a lot of interesting tools, uh, like uh, you can automatic, automatically do code unpacking, malware analysis, because uh, uh, this talk about vulnerabilities, uh, I use uh, uh, tracing, so for me, it's uh, interesting uh, how uh, analyzing program uh, process some data, where how to trigger the crash in an automatic way. So uh, there is a, a lot of APIs. For example, uh, uh, if there is a EIP got tainted, uh, if there is a some process started, it has a lot of uh, interesting things. So basically, it's kind of a, a virtual machine, but not virtual emulator. But because uh, it's uh, based on very old version, uh, on version 0.9.1, uh, um, it was uh, released in, uh, I think, it was uh, January 2008. Eight, and uh, it uh, has it. It's slow. It has uh, a lot of uh, bugs, um, and the main fact fact that um, Timu based on this version of Kimu and not on the latest one, because uh, in version of uh, 0.10, um, developers of Kimu uh, made uh, a, a lot of uh, enhance of. Uh, um, performance. Uh, they implemented tiny code generator, and uh, after that, uh, implementing taint propagation algo. Uh, there is they broke some functionality, and uh, uh, Bitblaze team. Uh, and uh, actually, when I see how tiny code generator, it's not clear how to implement uh, taint uh, propagation algo uh, with tiny code generator. So maybe uh, it's a good idea to get the latest version of Kimu and uh, remove somehow tiny code generator, so downgrade. But uh, the thing is that the tiny code generator is kind of a uh, feature of Kimu. So about Vine, uh, Vine, uh, it's um, so if we talking about Timu, it's just the main purpose it's uh, just trace, trace everything. 
trace and lock. If we talk about Vine, uh, the main uh, purpose behind Vine is um, uh, his intermediate language. And uh, uh, if we're talking about uh, tracing the front end, uh, for example, trace. And uh, there is uh, some utils which processes the trace file and uh, generate IL program. And um, the thing that uh, IL, uh, intermediate language, uh, the, the main idea behind implementing another intermediate language is to simplify, uh, unify uh, the code. So um, if we're talking about x86 architecture, its um, instructions are not definitely not atomic. For example, uh, x add instruction it's uh, addition and then exchange. It uh, changed a lot of uh, a lot of flags. So when you when you have such operation that uh, influence uh, the, a lot of objects, uh, it's a good idea to simplify. And uh, with this uh, uh, intermediate language, there is if you take a look, there are just seven instructions and actually. Um, the main of them it's a uh, var, uh, jump, c jump, uh, and uh, there is a uh, four special command: hold, assert, label, uh, special. Um, so program is just a map between declaration and instructions. Uh, there is uh, also expression, and the thing is that um, what is the nice thing behind this intermediate language. So you can transform trace from one architecture to uh, another architecture. Because uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, for example, it doesn't matter how memory works. It just uh, no, has own process. And um, there is a. Uh, Operations like uh, plus, mean, and minus, um, unary operations. Um, actually, there are some kind of types of values. For example, uh, one one bit, eight bit, uh, sixteen. And uh, nice thing is that memory could represent Indian. Um, Big Indian, little Indian, it doesn't matter. So when you trace file, for example, with trace cap, and then process uh, this trace file to, uh, to see what actually uh, instruction in there, uh, you, will sh you will see something like that. Um, uh, there's a address, uh, instruction, it's ADT syntax, and before instruction, actually, it's a kind of uh, taint info. So, if we take a look, um, T0 means that statement is not tainted. Uh, T means uh, T1 means that it uh, has some taint info. Uh, so, for example, in this uh, uh, instruction, rep stores. Um, we have um, EX, which is uh, not tainted. There is a marked T0. And uh, memory, which is, um, has uh, some tainted info. Uh, and actually, because uh, it's uh, not uh, atomic instruction, there is a wrap prefix, and uh, wrap uses use counter uh, re register. So there is uh, several objects. For example, uh, register uh, EAX, register ECX, memory at some address. And um, there is uh, also, uh, if you see RCW, there is uh, some kind of uh, info about how object uh, used. So. Uh, EX, it just uh, read, so uh, basically 
this is instruction done value of EAX reads and assigned to memory at uh, uh, address uh, which equals EDI uh, register. So after you can see that there is a, uh, some digits after T1, it, uh, it, for example, 15 means that it comes from network, then uh, uh, 12, 31, it's, for example, offset, and um, you can implement a lot of uh, your own tained info. So uh, th uh, this info you got uh, after trace reader, uh, but uh, it, it, just f it just for reading. Actually, the thing is to generate IL code from the trace file. Uh, and every play actually does it. So uh, this can just using of uh, application replay with you. And um, uh, when you set uh, some input data, uh, actually it uh, means that it's kind of attacker controlled. So for the intermediate language, uh, there marks uh, input index uh, offset and the um, type of the value. So uh, this is kind of, uh, for example, uh, looks like uh, intermediate language code. So there is a values, uh, types, assignments. Uh, so the main thing behind uh, free variables is to, you have some uh, first trace which uh, covers some functions and uh, at uh, some function, you have uh, at some conditional jump, uh, you want to change, for example, uh, change direction. So for uh, this purpose, there is a WP, weakest precondition utility in uh, Vine package. And um, it, uh, from intermediate language, it uh, produces uh, STP code. And the uh, STP is a uh, solver, constraint solver. Uh, it, this is uh, not about BitBlaze, it's separate. Actually, it's STP, in my opinion, it's not the best one. There is uh, also SMT uh, from Microsoft Z3. Uh, but uh, Vine and BitBlaze uses this. And um, for example, after WPWT uh, processes uh, some file, it generates STP program. So STP actually, uh, there is a own language, which is uh, maybe more uh, e easier than Vine. And um, the main thing uh, for solver, it's to solve something. And uh, the trick that we have some trace, some intermediate language program, some STP program, and we change some uh, condition on some jump and uh, query it false and say give us counterexample. So the main idea is to, I haven't, uh, to get there, tell me that I'm not, I'm not uh, true. So uh, not on not, give us true and this solve. So if we change some path and uh, uh, query that uh, this, pro this STP program is false and give us counterexample, STP uh, will uh, produce some uh, output. Uh, output of STP is concrete values for free variables. So, uh, for example, this uh, answer of STP is that, uh, yeah, invalid, and there is a values for some kind of input values. So with, after we, we generate in second input data with these values, we can get another uh, path in the program. So uh, this is actually main parts of uh, Vine, uh, of uh, Timu, and uh, 
is, uh, uh, as I said before, uh, BitBlaze, what is released in public, it's a kind of tool not, for, not, not, not ready for using uh, in real world. Uh, so, um, uh, to discover some vulnerabilities, you have to build uh, your own hooks, for example, you have uh, trace, monitor, some uh, memory operations, uh, and in, uh, in Vine, uh, for example, application replay, it's um, just replay program, and uh, we have to change this utility to make uh, uh, changes to uh, path. Uh, so second is uh, STPs, and uh, either plugins, uh, there's a uh, plugin that uh, just uh, find X reference uh, calls from uh, calls to some allocators, uh, string copy, memory copies. Uh, actually, there are a lot of uh, potential dang dangerous functions. And uh, in direct calls, it's uh, uh, great for uh, kind of profiling double free and user free and uh, out of sight. Uh, uh, out of bounds array vulnerabilities. And actually, we have a database where we store everything uh, from IDA Pro plugins. And next, uh, to, process, uh, to process some program, to, um, to trace some program, uh, we have to execute it. So we have to build. Uh, uh, Publishers, publishers is just a code that uh, executes program with our input data, and uh, actually iterators that uh, uh, loop uh, whole process uh, to get uh, some results. So, for example, uh, every program it's a graph. There is a node. There is an edge. And for example, IDA Pro plugin. Uh, said that in that node, uh, for example, uh, potential dangerous mem copy. And we have trace, uh, we have path uh, that near that. And uh, the main purpose is to uh, how to get poten uh, to potential vulnerable uh, place and trigger some bad things like a memory corruption. So, uh, Minimum goal is to uh, maximum coverage dangerous code, uh, and uh, maximum goal is to coverage maximum all the code. But uh, in reality, uh, if you coverage 100 uh, percent, it doesn't matter that uh, you discovered every vulnerability, because uh, uh, there is a uh, 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 range of some objects, and uh, uh, on some uh, not conditional branch, there is actually a branch because there is an operation on uh, memory, and and at this instruction, uh, exception could be triggered, and you gonna redirect to exception handler. Uh, so basically, uh, there is a. Um, kind of invisible, invisible path in program. So uh, maximum coverage of the all code, it um, uh, uh, from the static part, it's uh, uh, just static part uh, doesn't uh, see every picture, uh, whole picture. So the basic algorithm behind that, it's uh, first, first of all, we get a list uh, from uh, some nodes uh, where the potential code. Then we, in Timu, in emulator, uh, we invoke targeted code. For example, if we test in some, uh, for example, Adobe Reader, uh, publisher just uh, invoke Adobe Reader with 
our PDF. Uh, then tracing begins. At some point, we stop tracing, uh, converts it uh, to uh, intermediate language. Then we change intermediate language to uh, get closer to place where we're going to uh, analyze where we where we have to go actually and um, I'll prime uh, then uh, by WPUtil we generate uh, STP program prime and after solving STP program prime we get um, data uh, after processing uh, we, uh, we will get uh, a new path. So, and this is a uh, loop to uh, point uh, two, and uh, uh, there is a kind of, uh, there is no end in this uh, algo, because uh, um, uh, there is a exit conditions. Uh, I haven't uh, write about them. Uh, for example, exit condition, if crashed if you uh, get crash, you get EIP tainted, so you or you just uh, see that uh, some code uh, doesn't uh, connect to input data. So this is a kind of visual uh, representation. So uh, we have some input data. First, uh, it uh, processes in uh, emulator, and then uh, Vine generates uh, intermediate language. By the way, uh, you can not just uh, uh, trace, you can uh, do a lot of uh, things, uh, for example, hooking, uh, profiling, and because uh, Timo and uh, Vine connects to each other, uh, you have to build your own Vineutil, uh, which is kind of not easy for me because Vine uh, de is developed in OCaml language. Uh, it's a functional programming language. It's kind of uh, another plant for me. Um, so after we get uh, trace, we generate IL code, then we change path, and then we uh, Get uh, get a STP prime code. Uh, STP generates new input data. So this is kind of uh, easy, straightforward idea, but uh, actually it uh, works because um, uh, uh, it works, but it has uh, a lot of pitfalls. Well, I will talk about it later. Um, actually. Uh, the main uh, disadvantage of this system is uh, uh, performance. Uh, and uh, uh, about performance um, and how to get rid of it, just, uh, for example, use uh, uh, this system for explore some path, uh, not 100% of coverage, just some part of the code, and then uh, you will have uh, a lot of input data that uh, uh, each input data uh, covers a different path in program, and then you just uh, mutate uh, this, this data. And uh, this approach, kind of a combination of mutation-based fuzzing and uh, coveraging, uh, gives a really nice results. So um, disadvantages, like I said, previous it's performance and actually uh, definition of the vulnerability, it's not an easy task because um, uh, there is a, for example, uh, logical vulnerabilities, which uh, actually I haven't thought uh, how to define them. So if we're talking about uh, performance and how it's awful, uh, some uh, uh, digits uh, overhead. Uh, we, in ideal world, there is a kind of thousand loss, 
and in reality it's uh, uh, tens of thousands and uh, actually uh, it uh, depends on uh, how much of functionality you have done in uh, Timu because uh, by hooking a lot of functions uh, the overhead will grow uh, very quick and it depends on your target because uh, tracing a lot of uh, uh, some big programs like Google Chrome or some another browser where there's a lot of threads. Uh, in uh, Kimu, it's just uh, scary. For example, uh, I um, tried to uh, analyze uh, some uh, vulnerability in Microsoft Office, which I found recently. And um, actually, uh, generating, uh, just tracing to the vulnerable code with uh, actually data that crashed Microsoft uh, takes uh, about 40 minutes. And the uh, trace file is about uh, 30 gigabytes. And uh, when you have such uh, a big uh, trace file, IL program is uh, huge too. And um, it's simply, uh, every play simply can't uh, process su such huge files. So, um, in my opinion, it's, uh, uh, this uh, BitBlaze, uh, it's not a uh, good uh, thing for user land programs. It just, uh, uh, it's better use uh, uh, pin tools. There is uh, some project called, uh, called BAP. It's the same as BitBlaze, but uh, it's uh, Vine plus pin tools. So if you uh, like to uh, discover vulnerabilities in uh, Chrome, Internet Explorer, or whatever, user land program, uh, it's better use BAP than Timu because uh, pin tools DBI is much much faster than uh, Timu. So uh, there is also implementation issues in uh, BitBlaze itself because uh, in Vine, uh, Vine uses uh, VX and uh, Timu for uh, logging. Uh, Instructions. Uh, it uh, uses uh, data assembler Z, Z, and um, the thing is that uh, uh, it, some of the instructions VEX uh, can't handle. Uh, for example, some special uh, kernel land instruction. Uh, so it's uh, cost because VEX is part of Valgrin for using for user land programs. And um, uh, Apple Play, for example, utility, uh, it's um, only generates uh, intermediate language for a single thread. So it's uh, basically for user land programs, it's uh, not enough. You will not get uh, some re real results. So. This uh, system, actually, uh, kind of concept, it's uh, uh, not, I would say, it's uh, good only versus uh, some, uh, some part of code. And um, in my uh, research, uh, I uh, figure out that uh, BitBlaze is better used for kernel land, because uh, there is uh, less code, and um, Traces are smaller, uh, intermediate uh, language programs smaller, everything smaller, and far, uh, and works uh, uh, faster than uh, if you want to trace some user land program. Uh, and but, mm, but actually, even in kernel land, uh, also performance is uh, very bad. So um, about uh, future of uh, this uh, system. It's a uh, reduced overhead, uh, overhead of performance. And uh, uh, the bottleneck of this system definitely is uh, Kimu. Uh, and uh, 
Timu, which is based on Kimu. So the straightforward um, uh, thought, it's uh, we have to remove it some, somehow. Uh, for example, uh, uh, move uh, uh, algorithm of data propagation to hypervisor, and uh, in my opinion, it will enhance uh, uh, performance a lot. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, code to port, re rewrite. Uh, there is uh, some project, Ather, uh, which is uh, based on Xen, but uh, it uh, uh, kind of dead, in my opinion, because it's uh, about it, uh, it's about four years old it, and doesn't uh, upgrading whatever. And uh, uh, next uh, step, it's uh, automation of exploit generation because this system it generates uh, just uh, proof of concepts, just uh, it uh, just triggers a crash. And um, to automate exploit generation uh, in real world. Uh, we are facing a lot of exploit mitigations and uh, uh, to generate reliable exploit, uh, you have to build some state. Uh, so for example, if we're talking about uh, pool overflow or in your land heap overflow, you have to uh, defragment, fragment somehow. So, uh, um, for example, stack-based overflow, in my opinion, uh, they uh, just uh, have gone in history because there is a stack canary, and uh, it's uh, uh, st stack canary protection. Every uh, by now, it's uh, almost everywhere. Uh, but uh, in fact, I uh, discovered uh, have discovered some vulnerabilities, some antivirus. There is a no stack canary <laughs> uh, in yeah in 2012. It's strange, uh, and the main pro uh, the main uh, problem of automation exploit generation is that even if you get EIP tainted EIP under your control, you uh, know exact formula uh, how input data uh, change EIP. It doesn't mean that uh, you get expl that you have exploit because uh, there is a randomization and uh, there is a hot topic on the internet how to automate uh, memory leakage uh, to build uh, to uh, control the IP and know where is uh, some binary sites so in my opinion it's uh, if someone uh, solve will solve it he will be billionaire so there's a, another thought uh, how we can com uh, combine uh, some another frameworks with this uh, system. For example, uh, there is a one good project, S2E. It's um, uh, uh, LVM uh, plus Kimu, and it also uses STP. Uh, but uh, the great thing is that it based on the uh, newest version of Kimu. It support uh, ARM architecture, and uh, there is uh, some kind of new concept that uh, there is uh, uh, no uh, uh, no point uh, to uh, between. If you have a trace file, there is uh, no points to generate IL, STP. Um, it's uh, actually this slide uh, is uh, Alex is uh, more skillful in that, so <laughs> I will skip it. Um, uh, let's uh, take a look about uh, some kind of uh, examples. Uh, for example, uh, uh, for kernel land uh, overflows, stack, pool, integer pointer or writes, uh, null pointer the reference race conditions, uh, and um, for example, uh, various logical vulnerabilities also reside in kernels, and because uh, uh, there are a lot of types of logical vulnerabilities, it's uh, hard to define them properly. So, for example, uh, this uh, is very uh, common in programs. Uh, for example, there is a multiplication and allocation of 
some size and there is a loop and there is a memory corruption uh, in that uh, loop. And uh, on free or in that loop, uh, there will be crash. So there is a, we can uh, define uh, by uh, intermediate language how such uh, vulnerabilities look like. For example, uh, uh, if we got uh, two objects and uh, they, uh, after some operation, uh, it uh, can be uh, multiplication, uh, addition, uh, concatenation, whatever. And uh, then uh, this var goes to uh, allocation, doesn't matter uh, heap or stack, uh, just um, uh, assignment, uh, uh, new variable, somehow uh, it uh, depends uh, on uh, range of the memory of the um, length, and uh, there is a next, there is a uh, addition uh, on that memory, and uh, picture uh, the main perp, uh, the main question, if there is a a variable uh, bigger is uh, than uh, total length. Uh, it's um, it uh, uh, looks like it's uh, out of out of bounds, uh, right? Uh, so, uh, for for example, it's a ba of course it's basic definition because uh, in real world there is a lot of uh, uh, different examples. But uh, the main, uh, the main thought it's like that. So, for example, uh, actually, uh, basically, yeah, we can define vulnerability if EIP get tainted, but uh, also uh, definition on pointers, uh, buffer of flows, uh, uh, integer of flows, um, uh, integer operation, and the results. Because uh, uh, it's a lot of uh, static uh, parts of uh, the system uh, gives a lot of false positives because uh, uh, it's kind of paranoid. It uh, shows every uh, instruction like li, uh, LIA, uh, load extension address, and uh, multiplication, uh, like uh, it's a potential overflow. And to solve that it's uh, not potential, it's uh, real, you, you have to implement a value um, analysis, value r uh, range, uh, what object uh, can uh, give a range from, is it constant or not? And uh, for example, define a race condition, uh, straightforward thing, it's just see if there is a, uh, some place where the uh, memory, uh, some uh, uh, actions with memory, and is there a thread safe? Uh, and if it's not, it's potential, uh, there is potential race conditions. So if we're talking about uh, kernel land, uh, for example, uh, uh, famous IOSTL, um, and uh, uh, Let's take a look at device IO control. There are some uh, uh, parameters, and uh, um, actually, uh, the concept b b behind it's a um, uh, taint uh, IOSTL code, taint buffers, taint lengths, and see, uh, for example, uh, there's uh, some uh, thoughts. Uh, firstly, we can uh, Taint only IOSTL code, not buffers, not lengths, just IOSTL codes, and see uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, what exactly uh, range of IOSTL codes some uh, device processes. And then, after, only after that, we taint uh, buffers and lengths to see uh, if there is uh, some range checks, if there is some uh, memory corruptions, and um, and for uh, and actually for 
uh, device IO control. There is a, a two uh, method, methods that uh, um, if we it's if it's method buffered, uh, you have to taint only data that you protest to um, driver by invoking ISTL. And if it's uh, if ISTL code is method neither, it's better. It's uh, great to taint pointer itself because the uh, inter, uh, inter output manager of Windows um, just uh, doesn't uh, check uh, the valid is the pointer valid or not. So this is a basic concept and uh, actually uh, this concept uh, works for example uh, in a this uh, zero day, uh, about, tw <laughs> about 20 months uh, old zero day, um, the thing is that uh, uh, untrusted code, uh, uh, code from the uh, user land goes to some uh, function, FTL uh, release context, but uh, FTL release context uh, was, develop was developed in, f uh, in that way that uh, only, only uh, kernel, uh, only um, uh, data from the kernel uh, FTL release context process uh, f uh, only in kernel land. And if you somehow have to access to such function from the user land, it's uh, at first time it's uh, decrement arbitrary memory, but then uh, you uh, when uh, some coverage next code and reveals that if you constrain some object, you have to control. Uh, you will you will lead to it leads to control of EIP totally. So uh, actually, the, f the first one yeah, decrement of uh, arbitrary memory. It's already ex exploitable condition, but uh, if you skip it, if you allocate memory, just decrement it and uh, process. Uh, uh, next, you will see that uh, there you have uh, total control of EIP register. And this very easy uh, vulnerabilities uh, uh, migrated from one version of total GData, total, uh, total care to another. And uh, in the newest version, uh, it's finally fixed. Um, uh, also, coverage and uh, uh, smart hooking of, of smart <laughs> of some interesting functions uh, uh, reveals uh, uh, strange uh, realization of uh, some uh, defenses. For example, uh, unprivileged user can uh, simply turn off or firewall. Uh, it's uh, of and degrees uh, uh, security of the. Uh, whole system, and um, the thing is that in it, uh, ISTL, there is uh, two vulnerabilities. Uh, one is just BSOD, null point of reference on reading, and uh, after uh, crash after null point of reference, there is a, a just logical vulnerability. Then, a great example of uh, 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 mistakes in kernel land that um, in fact Agnitum it's uh, one of the firewall and uh, antivirus very famous in Russia but um, uh, they uh, bought some uh, engine and this engine uh, actually it's file vb and nt.sys it's kind of DLL but in kernel land and uh, the thing is that uh, in this DLL, this, uh, there are about uh, 50 uh, expert functions, uh, but uh, uh, it, uh, the picture is that you can invoke these functions from the user land, and uh, th these functions, uh, a lot of parameters are pointers, and uh, there, is a, there is a full trust on them, because uh, it's a DLL in kernel land, and uh, no checks for valid 
uh, memory. So uh, it uh, will, it, it simply is, it leads to 50 uh, different uh, vulnerabilities like arbitrary memory read, arbitrary memory write, and uh, full pwnage. And the thing is that uh, this uh, buggy code uh, used by over several products, uh, over seven, eight, Actually, it's a product of Virus Buster, if you heard about it, I don't know. And uh, next, uh, uh, when I uh, tested the system, I revealed some uh, interesting, uh, uh, interesting uh, examples in the Microsoft code. Uh, for example, they still uh, haven't documented uh, some uh, interesting uh, functionalities in the uh, in input output manager of Windows. Uh, for example, uh, method buffer, uh, I co call it signal, because uh, if you process ISTL with uh, uh, zero lengths and zero pointers, uh, it will uh, craft uh, IRP and process it to driver. And uh, actually, this lead. Uh, uh, to a lot of a lot of stupid uh, BSOD bugs. Actually, this uh, signal is a. Um, if we're talking about CA internet security, there is about four vulnerabilities of this kind. Uh, then, okay. Ah, okay. If we uh, see another example, uh, some code just uh, reboot emulator. Uh, Another, uh, there is a, on uh, several ISTL, there is a pool corruptions. So uh, you can uh, discover just in one uh, particular product, which uh, basically uh, decreases uh, security of your system by implementing new functionality. And the thing is that, like in uh, this example, that one uh, driver uh, using by several products. The same thing uh, with this, because uh, this driver as uh, -E also presents in Unthread and Lavasoft. So actually about Trend Micro, I already talked at uh, Hakito in Paris. Actually uh, also there is another device with uh, uh, vulnerab stupid vulnerability. Uh, so the main pitfalls of uh, taint analysis is that there is uh, some uh, problems, for example, with Trulang, uh, which is, for example, you have data tainted, and uh, Trulang uh, calculates uh, length of the string by sub uh, subtracting the pointers uh, data are tainted, but monitors are not, and there is no taint information, nothing propagates. Uh, also, the uh, fall of taint analysis, it's uh, con uh, constant values, propagation, and um, if you, you can uh, solve all these pro problems, but uh, uh, if you enhance levels of taint information, it's more overhead. And uh, yeah, about some uh, pitfalls of taint in uh, kernel land, there is uh, also taint information uh, lost. Uh, then uh, you have, for example, a check of some system variables, uh, which is you haven't control. Uh, for example, just um, uh, previous mode. Uh, uh, some code uh, checks I I if it's uh, come from kernel or from user, and. Uh, it's a variable of uh, process state, and uh, you haven't uh, tainted, you haven't see anything. So it's a, uh, and uh, some pitfalls, uh, uh, for example, there is a defense mechanism, because uh, uh, when you taint in, there, it's a uh, low, uh, very uh, slow, uh, there is a great uh, performance overhead, and there is some mechanism that if uh, some process uh, uh, doing something in uh, graphic, it just bl blue screen. So uh, we get, we'll get nothing. So uh, 
about pitfalls about ISTL, as I said, it's checking uh, of system variables, for example, uh, getting of previous mode or some check of is it pro is this, is it process uh, uh, our antivirus engine or its attacker, and uh, some of the antiviruses even uh, implemented uh, hooking uh, this function and just. Uh, close the vector uh, in the uh, ice tail. So, in conclusion, uh, I think uh, that um, quality is kind of uh, security level. Uh, uh, taint analysis, uh, it's not, uh, it's a kind of a technique uh, of the main time, but uh, in main time it's uh, uh, mostly from academia and uh, uh, most of the people uh, get uh, rewarded uh, by using uh, uh, more uh, simple solutions like uh, s stupid fuzzers, like mutation-based. But uh, this uh, approach is uh, nice uh, that uh, it's just uh, full automation. You haven't, uh, you haven't to build your own father all the time. So, and uh, uh, conclusion about Microsoft that actually it's uh, strange that uh, a lot of uh, drivers which are signed uh, and uh, in that driver there are a lot of stupid vulnerabilities because it seems that Microsoft uh, just signed and doesn't check. It's strange. So that's it. I'm have it. Peter, uh, thanks a lot for your talk. Yeah. Uh, we're already past uh, the end time. Uh -huh. So if you have some questions, uh, you can talk to Peter. But uh, there's also dinner, and I'm sure people are here. Okay.